This is the story of Spicejet Flight 7077 and Qatar Airways Flight 7477. On the 20th of August 2020, just three weeks after the crash of Air India Express Flight 1344, two planes, a Spicejet Dash 8 from Bangalore and a Qatar Airways A320 from Doha, was approaching Cochin International Airport in India. The Qatari A320 was on the Isla Zulu approach for runway 27, and the Spicejet Dash 8 was on the ILS X-ray approach to runway 27. Cochin International has three approaches for runway 27, X-ray, Yankee, and Zulu. Think of each approach as a highway in the sky that you fly along to get to the runway. It takes you along specific waypoints and beacons, making sure that you're safe from terrain and obstacles. If you're approaching from the northeast or the southeast, the Zulu approach is perfect for you. You can enter the pattern, then overfly the Charlie India Alpha VOR, then you fly away from the airport. Once you're sufficiently far away, you can turn around and lock onto the ILS of runway 27. From there on out, it's a simple three degree descent down to the runway. For the X-ray approach, you enter the pattern and fly towards the Charlie India Bravo VOR beacon. Then you turn to 315 degrees, which takes you right to the ILS of runway 27. From there, you just land. At Cochin, runway 27 is favored a lot more than runway 09 due to the unique wind conditions at the airport. Even though the approach to runway 09 has very few obstacles compared to the approach to runway 27. On that day, the Dash 8 seemed to be ahead in the queue to land, so ATC asked them to drop down to 3,000 feet. They would maintain this altitude till they intercepted the glide slope from below. Meanwhile, the Qatari A320 was asked to descend down to 5,000 feet. This put plenty of space between the two planes. At about 10.45 a.m. UTC, the controller noticed that the Dash 8 was slower than he expected them to be. They were well below 3,000 feet. The controller said, you descended below 3,000 feet, sir. Interception altitude is 3,000 feet. You are maintaining 2,000 feet. The Spicejet plane appeared to comply. The controller saw that its altitude was now increasing. But unfortunately, the Spicejet did not level off at 3,000 feet. It continued to climb. As the Dash 8 climbed through 3,700 feet, the two blips that represented the planes on the controller screen went bright red indicating that they were dangerously close to each other. The controller said, stop climb, stop climb, 3,700 feet. They were getting too close for comfort to the A320. As soon as the controller had done that, the TCAS alert sounded. The automated warning is designed to issue commands like climb or descend to pilots to avoid a collision. The controller immediately asked the A320 to break off from the approach and to go around and vector the A320 to the south just to clear the airspace. At their closest points, both planes were less than 500 feet apart vertically and less than two nautical miles apart laterally, well below the required limits. The controller then cleared both planes to land again, and they landed with no issues whatsoever. The first thing that they looked into was the airport itself. This was quite a busy airport, and most of the arrivals into Cochin used the ILS Zulu approach. The thing is, most planes taking off from Cochin take a right turn after taking off. This meant that the area to the northwest of the Charlie India Alpha VOR becomes quite crowded at times. This meant that controllers are forced to keep the arrivals at relatively high altitudes as they pass over the Charlie India Alpha VOR for their approaches. Now, at most airports, you can do something known as tactical vectoring, where you ask planes to turn to the right or to the left to extend their base leg a bit so you can give them some more space to lose altitude or for separation purposes. But at Cochin, that was not possible due to terrain constraints at the airport. This can be a bit confusing for new pilots who are not used to the airport. They then looked at where the planes were at the time of the near miss. The A320 was flying away from the airport as it flew the Zulu approach, and the Dash 8 was on final. This meant that they were flying in opposite directions in a general sense. As the approach progressed in the cockpit of the Dash 8, the pilots forgot to engage the altitude selected mode. 
When you engage the altitude select mode, the plane will climb or descend to your selected altitude, and then it will maintain that altitude. But since the pilot had not engaged the altitude select mode, the plane continued to descend, well below the 3,000 feet that it had been cleared to. The controller noticed this and informed them that their altitude. So at 2,281 feet, the Dash 8 decided to go around, and it started climbing. But there was just one problem. The spice jet had been told to maintain 2,000 feet in the event of a go-around so that it wouldn't get in the way of other traffic. Quote, SEJ 7077, in case of missed approach, climb on runway heading 2,000 feet. But the crew of the spice jet did not do that. They increased power and started to climb. Now, this wouldn't be much of a problem at other airports. But the thing is, at Cochin, the approach to runway 27 and the go-around path are quite close by, which brought the planes really close to each other. Remember, the A320 is still flying the outbound leg of the ILS Sulu approach. So it was quite close to the go-around path of the Dash 8. Now, two things really stopped this from turning catastrophic. One was the quick thinking of the controller, who was quick to notice the problem and was quick to issue clearances to mitigate that problem. The second thing that saved them was the TCAS system. When the planes started to get close to each other, a TCAS TA or traffic advisory was generated. It's basically there to let pilots know that there's someone else in the vicinity that's getting a bit too close for comfort. At this point, the TCAS computers are calculating the path of your plane and the other plane to see if there's any possibility of them intersecting. If the computer thinks that there's a possibility that the planes might collide, then it will issue complementary warnings to each plane. In this case, the TCAS system on the A320 told them to descend, and the TCAS on the Dash 8 told the SpiceJet crew to climb. And I'm glad to say that for once, safety nets worked as expected. Whoever invented the TCAS, give yourself a pat on the back. This accident comes down to just following the rules. The controller had told the Dash 8 crew about how go-arounds were to be conducted. They were asked to stay low, but I guess in the heat of the moment, they just forgot and decided to start climbing like any other go-around. That's kind of a specialty of coaching. Once you take off or go around from runway 27, there are explicit instructions asking you to stay low because most likely you're going to have incoming traffic right above you. Even departing airplanes are asked to restrict their altitude so as to keep them away from incoming traffic. In the conclusion portion of the report, the investigators asked the Airport Authority of India to come up with new approach and departure patterns for Cochin. Traffic at the airport is currently increasing, and as the airspace gets more and more congested, it's going to get harder and harder to keep planes apart. So you can expect more and more approach patterns at the airport as the amount of traffic grows. If you fly into Cochin, What's the deal with runway 09? The approach over the ocean seems unproblematic, yet it's barely used. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Also, in your opinion, how much of a role did TCAS play in this incident? Like, if the TCAS had not activated, do you think that this incident would have ended differently? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to watch more videos like this, might I suggest the near miss over Sweden. I promise you, it's really interesting. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. I will catch you guys next time. Stay safe.